Hey guys, so today's talk will be about the basics of genetics and then applying those concepts to breeding various generations of olive eggers in your flock. So in order to understand the basics of genetics, you have to understand the terminology of genetics. So I wrote some common terms on this board um, that I always used to get tripped up on, and you're going to see a lot as well. So um, it's phenotype, genotype, and allele. But in order to understand those three terms, you have to understand a chromosome. So we contain chromosomes, as well as chickens and other animals. Um, and this is just the place where DNA is condensed and genes are located. And genes code for specific information um, that are expressed genotypically or phenotypically. And it may sound worse than it is. Um, a phenotype is just a physical trait that you can actually see on an organism. So for instance, the phenotype for me would be blue eyes, brown hair, or on a chicken, you can say it's a buff or a lavender. Um, but the genotype is actually the genetic makeup that the organism is, something that you can't see. So the next term to go over is allele, and that's just a different form of the same gene. Genes are said to contain two alleles that are either heterozygous or homozygous. And what that means is um, homozygous are identical alleles. So geneticists represent alleles as letters in uppercase or lowercase. So this would be uppercase R, uppercase R, and this would be said to be a homozygous gene. Okay guys, this is a Punnett square. Um, this is the most basic or simple Punnett square you can actually draw. Sometimes there's 16 or 32 boxes depending on how many traits you're crossing in. But for our sake, we'll just keep it simple and do one small trait, four boxes. Um, when you're drawing this, put the male on top and the female on the left hand side. And for this case, we'll say that the male is homozygous dominant for brown eyes. So for dominant alleles, we always write uppercase letters. So, and since he's homozygous, they're identical uppercase letters. So for brown, we'll say uppercase B, uppercase B. The female's also homozygous, we'll say, but she's homozygous recessive for green eyes. And for recessive traits, we always write lowercase letters not to mix them up. So we'll say lowercase g, lowercase g. The same because they're homozygous. When crossing these, in this cross, you only want two alleles per box because that's all a gene contains. So small, lowercase g, uppercase b, and for, the, for this instance, it's actually all the same because you're just matching up each one. And so, say we didn't know the genotypes. Say we didn't know these, these letters. But when they, we cross them, the offspring came out with all brown eyes. Based on this cross, a test cross you could say, we know that brown eyes is the dominant allele in this cross. And we know that it's dominant because even though the offspring has this G, this, this lowercase g, it's not phenotypically expressed. We can't physically see the trait in our offspring. So yes, genotypically, they do carry a green-eyed allele, but phenotypically, they express only brown eyes. Okay, now we're gonna do a cross for a first-generation olive eggar. So we're going to imply that the blue egg genes are homozygous in this case. So we'll say that they're coming from the hen. So the hen's an Americana. And she's homozygous for two blue egg genes. And we'll use B for blue. And our rooster is carrying uh, brown egg genes. We'll say he's a black copper mare rooster. And just so we don't get confused, I'm going to use G for brown egg genes. So he's homozygous as well. He contains two identical brown egg genes. And so when you cross, in order for it to be an olive egg, it has to inherit one brown egg gene and one blue egg gene. And in this case, from the first generation cross, all 100% of the offspring will inherit one of each gene, which makes them olive eggers. So 100% olive eggers from first generation crosses. Now in the next Punnett square I'm going to show you what happens when you use an Easter egger um, as your blue egg gene. 
Okay, so you're gonna use your black copper man rooster again. If I can spell this correctly, black copper. And then we're gonna use an Easter egg here. And we don't know if she's homo or heterozygous for the blue egg gene. So we don't know if she carries one copy or two copies of it. So for the sake of this part and square, we're going to say that the hen carries one copy because she does lay blue eggs, but they're not very blue. Um, but we're unsure if she carries both like an Americana would. So we're going to do B again. So I'll do one uppercase and one lowercase. The lowercase being recessive, which means that she only contains one blue egg gene. And we'll do two again for the, um, the dark egg genes. And we'll start to cross. So this inherits one lowercase b, one g, one uppercase b, one g, another uppercase b and g, and then another lowercase b and uppercase g. And so in order for it to be an olive egg, like I said, it has to inherit one brown and one blue egg gene. And so in this case, it does. In this case, it does. But in these two cases, it only contains brown egg genes because since they're dominant, those are the ones that are phenotypically expressed. So only 50% will actually be olive eggers, and the other 50% will just be plain old brown egg layers. Brown layers. And so that's what happens when you cross Easter eggers into the mix. This also happens when you use a second generation olive egger, so I'll show you that one in the next one. We know the genotype of the first generation olive egger. So the F1OE, first generation olive egger, has a genotype of large B and large G, because that's what it takes. He, she contains one brown, one brown and one blue egg gene, and so we can put that up here. So now when we're crossing these for a second generation olive egger, these two inherit two G's, two G's, one B, one G, one B, one G. And so once again, G stands for brown egg genes. So only 50% of the olive eggers from the F2 cross will lay olive again, these two. Since these contain two brown egg genes, there's a 100% chance there'll be brown egg layers. So it's a 50-50 cross. And continuing on to F2, F3, F4, if you're continually crossing with an olive egger back to a black copper marin, for instance, you'll always have 50-50 shot. And so the case for crossing back to a blue egg layer, you'll have a 50% chance of a blue egg layer, a 50% chance of an olive egger again. So nothing's ever 100% after the first cross. If you had trouble following along on the Putnam Squares before, let me show you just a small um, diagram of the crosses. So if you use an Americana AM plus a Black Copper Marin, you'll always produce first generation olive eggers, F1 OE. If you mix the F1 OE with the Black Copper Marin again, you can either get 50% Brown egg layers. I can spell it correctly today. Brown egg. Or 50% second generation olive eggers. And if you back cross them again with, we'll say another black copper marin, because you want a dark olive egg, 50% will again be brown egg layers, while the other 50% will be third generation olive eggers. So I actually brought some eggs to show you. So I used Henrietta for my first cross. She's an Easter egger, and she's heterozygous for the blue egg gene, which means she only contains one. And so this is actually her egg. It's in the nothing crazy. And I mixed her with a brown egg layer. And she produced a fairly dark egg for her first cross. Now, I mixed her with another black copper marin to see what the second generation olives would look like. So I took 
this hen that laid this egg back crossed her with the same rooster and produced a darker egg, a darker green. Now there was only a 50% chance that this actual hen would lay olive, so I was lucky, but that's what happened. So you can see the actual the color difference from a first generation cross to a second. And so I actually don't like crossing beyond second generation, third generation, because the eggs start to get very brown. And so the only way to add some color, some blue color, is to obviously incorporate um, a hen or a rooster with blue egg genes. So I would back cross these to try and get a spearmint green. So in short, if you don't like surprises for your first generation, always use a purebred blue egg layer like Americanas or like bars because you know that the first cross is always going to yield 100% olive eggers. So I'll show you an example of my first gen cross. I used this blue. This was from an Americana and this was the brown from my Marin. And typically it produces pretty light greens. But if I back cross this green egg layer with my brown, I get a darker green, which is expected. And so if I'm still not happy with this olive, I'll cross this olive with this chocolate again, and 50% of the offspring will lay even darker olives. So you can see the transition of color. Let me see if I can get these up. So if I still want a darker olive, and I've noticed after the third gen cross, you kind of get mustardy, uh, ugly olives almost, because they're more brown than olive. So this is typically a fourth gen cross. Let me see if I can get into focus. And usually I'm pretty happy with this cross, so I'll stay. And if I want to um, lighten the egg from the first generation to a second generation to get maybe more of a minty green, I usually end up with, this might be a bad example, but I usually end up with pretty um, spearmint greens. And so that's pretty much the gist of breeding olive eggers. So I'll put up another video in a couple of days um, just for practice problems like practice Putnam squares and then I'll put up the answers too so you guys can try and uh, do it yourselves.